Hello everyone. In this video, we'll understand various methods of measuring national income. Estimating national income is an extremely complicated task. The reason is that the process of income generation in a modern economy is complex and therefore collecting necessary data on sources and levels of income is beset with conceptual and data availability problems. The economists have however devised different methods of estimating national income which we shall discuss in this video. Three approaches of measuring national income are the product approach, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. Any of the three approaches can be adopted to measure GDP of a country provided required data is fully available. Where a single method can't be adopted due to non-availability of data or due to conceptual problems as to what should be and what should not be included in national income accounting, a combination of the three methods is used to measure GDP. Now let's discuss each method in detail. The first method is the product approach. It measures economic activity by adding the market values of goods and services produced, excluding any goods and services used up in intermediate stages of production. This approach makes use of the value added concept. The value added of any producer is the value of its output minus the value of the inputs it purchases from other producers. The product approach computes economic activity by summing the value added by all producers. Now look at some examples. The example is output of orange seller is given as $35,000 an output of juice producer is given as $40,000. Now suppose the juice producer purchases oranges from the orange producer worth $25,000. Then if we simply add both the outputs of the producers, it would double count the $25,000. So the problem of double counting arises because of the conceptual and practical problems in determining whether a product is final or intermediate. For example, orange is a final product for orange producer but an input for juice producer. Now if oranges and juice are treated as final products then the value of oranges is counted twice at both the stages that is at orange production and juice production. This is called double counting in national income accounting. It results in overestimation of national income. So double counting means counting the value of a commodity more than once. To avoid this double counting, we sum value added rather than the output. Because juice producer processed oranges worth $25,000 into a product worth $40,000. So value added of a juice producer is $40,000 minus $25,000 which is $15,000. Orange producer doesn't use any inputs purchased from other businesses in this example. So its value added equals its revenue of $35,000. Now the total value added in the economy is adding both the value added of both the productions that is $35,000 by orange producer and $15,000 by the juice producers. We have subtracted $25,000 because $25,000 has already been added in the $35,000 which is the total output of the orange producer. So by adding this value added in the economy, we get $50,000 which is the GDP of economy by using the product method. Now second is the income approach. Income approach measures economic activity by adding all income received by producers of output including wages received by workers and profits received by owners of firms. According to this method, the net income payments received by all citizens of a country in a particular year are added up. That is, net incomes that accrue to all factors of production by way of net rents, 
net wages, net interest and net profits are all added together but incomes received in the form of transfer payments are not included in it. Now let's see this is GDP is equal to rent plus wages plus interest plus profit plus depreciation. Now let's look at an example. Example is same orange producer and juice producer. So profits of orange producer is equal to their revenue minus cost. For example, 15,000 is the cost of orange producer. That is 15,000 is the amount that an orange producer is giving as wages to its workers. Right? And similarly, profits of juice producer is 40,000 minus this 25,000 is what it has purchased from the orange producers, which we have already seen in the previous example. Plus 10,000, this $10,000 is the amount of wages the juice producer gives to its workers in the form of wages. Now GDP is equal to profit of orange producer plus profit of juice producer plus wage incomes of workers working in the orange producing company plus wage incomes of workers of juice producing company. So $35,000 minus $15,000 is $20,000 which is the profit of orange producer. Then profit of juice producers when we solve it will get $5,000 plus $15,000 which is the wage income of workers of orange producing company. This $15,000 and this $10,000 is the wages of the, of the workers working in a juice producing company. By adding this, we get $15,000 again as the GDP. So this is the same amount which we have got by using product method and same is there using income method. Now the third method is the expenditure method. It measures activity by adding the amount spent by all ultimate users of output. According to this method, the total expenditure incurred by the society in a particular year is added together and includes personal consumption expenditure, net domestic investment, government expenditure on goods and services, and net foreign investment. So y is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m is how we get national income or GDP by using the expenditure method. Now again, let's look at the example. We are taking the same example of an orange producer and the juice producer. Now households are the ultimate users of oranges. Juice producer is not an ultimate user of oranges because it sells the oranges in the form of juice to households. Thus, ultimate users purchase $10,000 worth of oranges from orange producers. Why 10,000? Because the total output of orange producer was $35,000 out of which $25,000 worth oranges have already been purchased by the juice producers. So the left amount is $10,000 worth of oranges which would be purchased by the households. Right? And then the $40,000 of orange juice from juice producer would be purchased by the households. So if we add both the expenditures that is $10,000 and $40,000 we will again get $50,000 as the GDP or the national income which we have got with the help of the expenditure method. Now why the three approaches are equal? So we see that the product income and expenditure approaches all give the same answer but it is not any accident. The logic of these three approaches is such that they must always give the same answer. To see why, first observe that the market value of goods and services produced in a given period is by definition equal to the amount that buyers must spend to purchase them. So juice producer has a market value of $40,000 only because that is what people are willing to spend to buy it. 
the market value of a good or service and the spending on that good or service are always the same. So the product approach which measures market values and the expenditure approach which measures spending must give the same measure of economic activity. Next, observe that what the seller receives must equal what the buyers spend. The seller's receipts in turn equal the total income generated by the economic activity including the incomes paid to workers and suppliers, taxes paid to the government and profits whatever is left over. Thus, total expenditure must equal total income generated implying that the expenditure and income approaches must also produce the same answer. Finally, as both product value and income equal expenditure, they also must be equal. Now, because of the equivalence of the three approaches over any specified time period, total production is equal to total income is equal to total expenditure, where production, income and expenditure all are measured in the same units, for example, in dollars or rupees. Now this equation is called the fundamental identity of national income accounting and forms the basis for national income accounting. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it and don't forget to subscribe the channel.